Hi, my name is Chris Blendon with the Peoria Fire Department Engine 194A Shift. Today we're going to talk about radio communications on the fire ground. It's one of the most important and vital, vital roles to have good communications on the fire ground. Um, we all had a theory that worked on throwing and donning our SCBAs of the Draegers of, of old um, using radios and communications, but Draeger basically came up with a new improved system that works better that has some noise cancellation qualities, reduces feedback on the fire ground, gives you a hands-free theory or method of throwing this, and also has clear, crisper communications. What's not so clear is this can be a little bit confusing on the procedure on putting this mask on, connecting it to the radio. Which thing are we doing first? Are we putting it on in the truck? Are we putting it on the side of the truck? Are we using two radios to throw this? What's the best method for hooking this up to the radio and throwing this bottle and mask on and getting to the fire ground as quickly as possible where there's a fire in the background? So today we're going to look at a few different methods on the procedure for getting this hooked into your radio and putting your mask on and look at the pros and cons on each method and see which one works best for you and which one you want to go with. Because I want to make sure that you're comfortable throwing this and, and, and comfortable with communications on the fire ground using this and the radio. So we'll take a look at a couple of different methods of throwing it. So the first method we're going to review is the original method where we have the radio in the cab and we have the SCBA in the back of the cab. Um, basically you would give your on-scene report and then proceed to the back of the truck to throw your SCBA on. Oh. So as you start walking to the back of the truck, you might be receiving units that are stacking up on you or basically you're having to talk to and communicate with these units at this point using your radio. As you open up the back of the truck and proceed to turn it on, at this point you can also have units trying to communicate with you, which you now have to stop and communicate with them. Now as you throw your bottle on, keep in mind there's possibly a rip and fire in the background. Now comes an important part trying to make a connection on this thing, talk communications, and also connect this while there's a roaring fire going on in the background. Keep in mind at this point, you still might need to talk to a unit and turn on your mask at the same time, where I could be missing important basically communications at this point. Mask is on. And now I'm good to go. I might have missed a lot of important functions. It's a little bit cumbersome. And also a little fun too to try and make these connections while there's a working fire going on in the background. The next method review we will review is the two radio method. Where you leave one radio in the front cab of the truck and then also have one pre-connected in the SCBA compartment. The only problem with this is the radio can be left unsecure here to move around or get damaged. And also when checking it, it has nothing to charge, so it's possible this radio's battery could, could drain and you possibly could have a dead battery when you go to the fire ground. Alright, with the two radio method, you would give your on-scene report and then turn on your radio and proceed to the back of the truck to throw your SCBA. The same as the first time, is commun communications will be coming at this point, which you need to handle and communicate. At this point, you have a radio in the back of the truck and one that you need to set somewhere. This is also a little bit dangerous and can be cumbersome because you don't want to drop or damage this radio. So you can put that one on the side, turn on your bottle, turn on your radio. If, communi if you communications come into this point, you could still handle them with your other radio, but it's a bit cumbersome and a little bit time consuming. At this point, I'm still not connected to my mask, so any communications that come in are still going to be handled with a second radio sitting.
At this point, I still have to turn my mask on. And now I'm ready to go. I'll proceed to the door. The third method we're going to review is keeping your SCBA mask in the cab of the truck and also putting it on in the cab of the truck. This is my most uh, favorite method, the quickest method, and reduces the chance of you missing transmissions. Let me make this clear also. This is also after you've done SCBA checks in the morning and prior to your shift beginning, you want to get things set up at morning truck checks. So the first thing I do, we're not en route to a fire, we're not on a fire, I want to ensure I have a good connection. Low stress environment, make the connection. I want to turn the radio on and ensure that I have a good battery. The next step is I'm going to pull my mask out of the bag, ensure that the speaker is working properly. To turn the mask on, I'm going to press the on button and hold it for approximately three seconds. I'll hear a series of about three short beeps which tells me that my battery is good. At this point, I'm going to take my captain's radio and I want you to ensure that you're connected to the captain's radio and you need to run through the channels. You should be able to hear audibly through your speaker the different channels coming through. You can also take it a step further by most channels are on fire A6. Um, you can put it on A6 and lock it into that position. This way you avoid any possibility of basically being on a fire and actually running through the different bank of decks. Once it's locked, it's locked on A6 and you can't run to different banks. This is something that I also do in the mornings. So once I ensure that the speaker is working properly, the radio has a good battery, the connection is good and hooked up to the captain's battery, then I go ahead and get it put away and set for the day. Keep in mind, that if you don't, if you forget to turn off this mask, after approximately one minute, it will also shut off by itself. That's a safety feature that Traeger added for us. I leave the bag in the cab of the truck, the connection's made, I turn the radio off, now it's charging in the cradle and it's ready to go. Now when you get dispatched to the fire, in route to the fire, I ensure I'm on the proper radio channel on the rig of the truck. I will also get my radio set before we get to the fire. I will actually turn my radio on, put it into my jacket, and also get my mask ready to go. This way when we get to the scene, it's going to be a smooth, uh, smooth procedure and it's going to be a quick, efficient method. We'd be routing the engineer in, getting ready, my mask is ready, my radio is ready. Now when I arrive on scene, if you're first on scene, second on scene, you mean to make a radio transmission, you're still going to be using the rig radio and your headset. Engine 194 to alarm. Be advised we're on scene of a single story residential structure. We got a working fire. We're going to be laying a supply line from the west pulling an engine three quarter hand line for search and rescue fire attack and the offensive strategy we will be assuming mission command. At this point I'm going to take off my headset. My mask is already on, my speaker is functioning properly and I'm going to go ahead and put it on. Alarm room might already be talking to me and I should be able to hear it in my, in my speaker at this point so I won't miss any transmission. At this point, if I have any units that stack up on me, I can actually talk to them. All I have to do is press the button on the side of, uh, the, side of the mask and talk to them. Command to engine 191. Let me have you go ahead and lay a supply line, uh, pull a hand line off your truck and assist us interior. At this point, if anybody talks to me, I can still hear it in the speaker. And I can basically do a hands-free communication system.
So at this point, if anybody talks to me, if anybody stacks up or I have a transmission, I can very easily press this button and talk to them. Command LT191, let me have you come out on the scene, grab utilities, go to the roof and cut a hole. I'm going to make you roof sector. Oh. At that point, all that's left to go is grab any tools I need. And click in with my SCBA and I'm ready to go. I'll put my gloves on. At this point, I can handle any communication I need. There seems to be a problem with some people finding this button on the side of the mask. Oh, I can tell you that it's going to take practice. And you need to get familiar with your mask and your communication system. Just practice finding it. And it's super easy just to hit the button and make a transmission. Your hands free. I can go ahead and talk. Command engine 191. Let me have you go ahead and lay a line, assist us interior. I can grab a tool if I need to. I can grab hose line off the truck. I can do anything I need because I'm hands free at this point. This for me is the most effective way to throw the bottle. It's the quickest and most effective hands free method and it reduces the chance of me missing transmissions. So all I have to do at this point is head to the fire. Now we'll review some of the most common problems that people have with this radio communication system. You need to make sure that you have a proper fit to the radio. Just twist it, make sure it snaps in, it's good, snug, and secure, and you have a proper fit. Make sure that your radio is turned on, and you need to make sure your speaker is turned on. You need to make sure you hold it down for approximately three seconds. You'll hear the series of three short beeps that ensures that your speaker is good to go. And also, be familiar with your push to talk button. This is a common problem for people. They have problems finding this button and pressing it. It's just a simple button. You've got to train with it, work with it, and know where it's at. Um, and one of the most common problems that we really find with this system is people overmodulate in a noisy environment. When there's a fan going, there's a working fire interior, and there's a lot of noise, people tend to raise their voice and yell. They feel like they have to yell inside this thing. Don't do that. Just speak in a calm, clear voice, and it will enhance communications on the outside and on the inside. So whatever method you use, the method that we showed you, um, you have another method, just ensure that you train with it, work with it, and use it. This needs to be used on the fire ground. Last if not, but not least, if you have a problem, you're inside the fire, communications aren't going well, maybe there's electronic breakdown, the battery, something's malfunctioning. Lastly, as a last resort, if you have to, disconnect it and go back to the original way of using it. The original method we used, just talking on the radio at this point. So, I'm Chris Blendon with the Peoria Fire Department. Have a safe shift. <laughs>